This is an SM Media production. Hi folks and welcome to the latest episode of the SM Media Horse Racing Show. I'm Scott McPike. It's an absolute pleasure as always to be your host and I am delighted as always to be joined by the one and only Callum McCorkin from the Scottish Daily Mail. Callum, it's been a bit of a lull since Cheltenham but we're back. How have you been? Yeah, all good. Yeah, um, like the usual lull, kind of four or five week break uh, and then it's kind of into the final three weeks of the, the jump season. There's a good title championship brewing with Dan Skelton, Paul Nichols, and Billy Mullins isn't far behind, which might mean that he's got a stronger team for entry than usual. So entry then air, then sand down, then you've got punches down to, to round it all off. So yeah, it's um sprint to the finish now for the season. It's a very busy time, yeah. But I don't think we've seen a lot of racing. I think it's been fairly quite dull in terms of a lot of call offs. Obviously, I think the weather's not playing ball as much as we wanted it to. It was a Saturday full of all weather action. But mm-hmm. as you say, there is a bit of excitement in terms of the, the trainers championship. Callum, at the moment, Willie Mullins isn't out of this by any stretch of the imagination. Who do you think has the edge right now? Well, it's a tough one. Maybe maybe Paul Nichols has a bit more ammunition to fire towards the end of the season. I think he'd have kind of quiet Chelton World and Skelton's horse is going to peak for that. So I think he might kind of fight back a little. Um, Willie Mullins is definitely not out of it. I mean, he's got a lot no. more chances of Grand National. I don't think like Paul Nichols is a runner. Um, Dan Skelton is one, but it's quite hard to maybe see it being factored in potentially. Um, in late night passes move yard, so he, he he's not really an option there. Mm-hmm. So they might. And I think Paul Nichols, he's he's very good at scouting uh, Sandown, particularly in the season as well, an, an entry. So I think his big hitters might be a bit more prime this time. And you, you'll probably edge it. But, you know, if Willie Mullins he, he wins the Grand National, I think he's, he's got three or four really good chances to hit, you know, he can dominate the kind of top four, top six. And that, that, that prize money can, can go there as well. So, yeah, um, I would probably side with Paul Nichols, just experience factor in. You know, he's probably the he's probably the man city of the title race. Well, uh, Dan Scale and the up and coming probably the Arsenal in, in it, and, and and Willie Mullins is you know Liverpool reading, and, and you know he, he can keep going strong and strong and strong, and and the big games he can get big results. So so yeah, um, all three of them get a chance in their own different way. But I probably think Paul Nichols will just about just kind of more more around to to fire and and, and probably get over the line. The Jockeys Championship, however, looks fairly, I would say Cobden certainly has the, his 14 wins clear. I don't I don't see him getting caught, especially with the Booker Eyes he's maybe going to have this week. The Irish Jockeys Championship, I don't know if you've seen this, Town Ending mm-hmm. Kennedy, that could go, that could be very, very interesting come the end of the, end of the season. Yeah, and Jack Kennedy's been riding wonderfully. He's he's always been threatening to kind of um, challenge Pogtown. It's just it's just whether he can stay fit, and, and he's fortunately managed to do that. Um and, and, and yeah, it's Punchestown tends to be very well and always dominated. Though I, th- I think you know Paul Towney probably gets over the line. He's he's not really running a lot of handicaps and other races outside mm-hmm. the graded ones. It's kind of mainly been kind of focused on, on graded success. So I think with Punchestown rolls, and I think Paul Towney will, will probably win because the Mullins yard seem to be stronger at the end of the season. The Lelight yard seem to be stronger at the beginning of the season. Um, and Sean Bowen had a bit had kind of a month out, and that, that's kind of cost mm-hmm. him in the title charge a little bit. And I think Harry Coppins got. He's got enough on his sleeve. He's got you know riding for Paul Nichols. So he's, he's he's destined to get quite a lot of winners and, and a lot of good rides. So and well, Sean Bowen kind of has to go all around the country, kind of a bit like Brian Hughes does up, up north to try and kind of plunder his winners there. But maybe even Harry Coppins picking up some yeah, useful rides outside the Paul Nichols as well. So um, so yeah, did expect him to to go over the line. We also had obviously the the traditional Easter festival at Fairy House. It was a couple of really good performance, obviously. In ten raffles, winning the uh, Irish Grand National, I thought really, really well. Six year old, obviously, but there was a couple of horses I wanted to get your thoughts on. There might be ones for the future now. You know as well as as well. I was a big fan at the start of the season of Marizur West. I thought he put in a really good performance at Fairy House. I think he could be very much a chaser for next season, but I think he could be a Drinmore, very much right handed type of horse. Yeah, he has sort of a tendency to kind of need to be right handed. Um... 
Yeah, he's, he's just a pain he's dropping with him. He's just been a slow burner. And, you know, I think going to chase it, you'd imagine he'd finish his season off at Punchestown and do quite well there. And Tennis Raffles is really the serious spring. You don't see many six year olds winning nah. races like that. Um, but, you know, novices tend to come forward. Um, he made one mistake at the second last and, and it didn't really affect him, which was which is quite impressive. He was a very neat jumper, you know, always to the four and, and, and won that quite well. So you'd maybe imagine the aim tree would be an agenda for him next year, given you've got to be a seven year old. And get more of yeah. jumping experience behind you to, to to go that way. Um, but I mean, he's he's one of these where he could possibly kind of prep in a gold cup and things like that. He has enough class. Like it reminds me of quite a lot of Bayer Maximus when when he won it at the level the level he could potentially get to. Yeah, absolutely. Another maybe the ride was better than the horse here, and we we slaughtered Paul Town End for his ride in Jade de Grugy at Cheltenham. But I thought he was absolutely brilliant. Honour at Fairy House, and you kind of thought. Kind of turned the nine. She was not winning that race, but he was a, he was excellent. I think that was probably one of the best rides we've seen in a while. Actually, I thought better than anything we've seen at Cheltenham. I'll be honest there, but just the way that he just was able to kind of cut through a space and know what he had on under him, and very very good. I thought. Yeah, it was impressive. I mean, she was partly flat for the first mile, and both tennis considered like maybe pulling up and. You know, Cheltenham has took more out of her than they thought, but you know, it's just a reward for, for persistence. And you know, she 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 was entitled to win that. I mean, the the class and the form angle of to, to beat some you know, decent rivals. I mean, Spindleberry, I thought she brilliantly didn't quite get home in, in second. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was on her at a big price each way and, and things like that. So, yeah, and she will improve next year. I mean, relate to Sally Grugy, you know, she does look a bit like a chaser as well. Uh, as we use brighter days ahead, they might they might go straight over over fences. They might have a year go in Mears Hurdle route and, and then go over fences. But I, I think she's probably going to be a better chaser than, than Hurdler in time. Yep, absolutely. And another nice performance I thought in the the uh, four year old race. I thought Butler's secret for Gavin Cromwell shaped very well. He did. He won, won it really well. He was a great he won favourite at the start of the season and then kind of dwindled, he was carrying a penalty and then there was kind of reasons to oppose and, you know, I think went off probably like third favourite in the end, um, mm-hmm. did it nicely. A lot of kind of big future in him and again, he's, he's probably one that you'd see at Punchestown at the end of the season. Uh, it obviously as well, we saw Brewing Up a Storm coming back to, to form. We also saw Journey With Me winning and uh, the day before, uh, Spillane's Tower beat Blood Destiny. Brilliant advert, brilliant uh, I bet for the trainer as well. I think it was something like he's 17 years since I think he won a grade one or something like that. It was an absolutely miraculous day. Any other takeaways from Fairy House? Not, not really. Um, I mean, I, I thought Farouk Delane ran quite well in the big one off a big yeah. weight. Nick Rocket didn't quite get home. Um, maybe, maybe not hitting the heights that we thought he would at the start of the season. He's kind of maybe, maybe hitting his ceiling a little bit. Um, but, you know, yeah, it was just like, I mean, the best races I thought were over the two and a half mile distance. Again, you know, the, the kind of grade ones and, and, and things like that. And, you know, when, when horses, when trainers kind of nominate targets and they go with their horses, they, if they have entry in Fairy House in mind, it normally means they're two and a half milers. Um, and I, I just, and I think Cheltenham would be a lot better if it got rid of these intermediate trip races and kind of and, and, and showcase them more at entry in Fairy House and you'd have. You know, more competitive racing and, and 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 less less kind of avoidance tactics and taking taking certain horses on. Um, that was kind of it's my big takeaway of you know if Cheltenham want to improve the program, then they can actually look at the likes of Fairy House and entry and see like where are their strengths at. We don't need to compete with that. You know, lots of lots of more races at kind of three miles or two miles instead of and, and, and two and a half miles can go you go and you know duck it out at entry and Fairy House. I mean that that seems to be a sensible option. Yeah, absolutely. But we did have a, a bit of sad news, obviously. Uh, yesterday came out that uh, multiple grade one winning jump jockey Aidan Coleman had announced his retirement from uh, riding, obviously, medical grounds. Only 35. Very, very difficult, really, to kind of imagine how Aidan Coleman's feeling because he will, still, he will feel like 35 is young for a jockey. But obviously, like the game that horse racing is, it can cause serious injuries and you can just tell his interview just reading it it was just gutting obviously he was on that luck as well and very very young age for a jockey but very very good jockey in his day and i think it's, it's right to remember him well oh yeah i do wish him all the best he'll probably stay in horse racing the game because that, that's the only kind of thing he knew the only thing he wanted mm-hmm. to be 
Um, and, and yeah, it was, it's a horrible kind of the horse crash through a wing at Worcester. Um, you know, gets under him and he's, he's his legs totally shattered and he's got to go to hospital and he's like no pain relief for nine hours. I can't see him and they go out in the morning and then you know it's finally it's finally treated. But he, he's tried to get back and school and session and he just can't do it. And he says he can't can't. He can, he can't jump or run really, so uh, you've not much hope of of of, of being a jockey if, if if that's the case. So yeah, and it's it's a big reminder of how you know not a lot of some some jockeys don't get out of this you know um, in, intact. Uh, sometimes we've got to force retirement. You know, there's been Stefano Church who died last week uh, at Melbourne in mm-hmm. flat racing. So you know, it's it's a very very dangerous game. Graham Lee got his diagnosis. Uh, he's Paralyzed from the from the neck down. Uh, Twenty years ago, he won the Grand National at Amberley House, and he's been a brilliant flat jock in the Northern Circuit for, for years. So you know, it's there's dangers everywhere you look in this game, and you know, people like Coleman and Story and and Graham Lee and Stefano Churchy are, are, are just constant reminders of it. You know, it is it is very dangerous. You're working with like very sensitive and, and and hyper you know resources that are you know <laughs> very dangerous. Lovely to work with, but I mean. They are very dangerous, you know. It, it can it can get very dangerous when things go wrong, and it and it, and it can happen out of the blue. So you've always got to be. It's a profession where you've always got to be alert for for one reason or another. I mean, we might watch on and go, "Oh, this is a pretty mundane race," you know. It, it, it might not might not be because if if one if one horse misbehaves or you know kicks out or or lashes out or, or you know spots something in the corner of his eye and, and, and bolts off you, um, it happens in yards and it happens on the track. It's, it's really sad. I mean, Aidan Coleman, cracking jockey, um, affinity, Paisley Park, probably yeah. the strongest moment. Um, good good in the big day, um, winning a champion chase in an article and put the kettle on. You know, he, he was he was he was rarely jocked off. I mean, John Bond and missed that because that injury. You know, when when he struck up a partnership with a horse, it was it was a very strong one. And it kind of, and it was an everlasting, everlasting one as well. So yeah, crack, crack and jockey maybe should have get more opportunities than he did as well. Yeah, thirteen Grade One wins, four wins at the Cheltenham Festival, and I think I'm right in saying they were all Grade Ones. I'm pretty sure. Just look at it. Stairs Hurdle, or no, sorry, Stairs Hurdle Champion Chase and Arco, and they won the attempts on Cave Aravis in 2009. Three Grade Ones to four Cheltenham Festival winners. Not, not bad going at all. Obviously, there's some uh, Irish, uh, Welsh Grand National, uh, placed in a Grand National as well. Was uh, Balco before he was running up in that in 2021. So, in a body of work there that, that's very, very hard to beat. Wish him all the best. Hopefully, he stays in the game. And it's just one of those sad stories in racing that, that happens. And on that note, we'll move into what's coming up this week, Callum. We've got a really fascinating week coming up. Obviously, headline with the Grand National that we'll do a bumper preview on at the, the end of our entry preview. But Big week of action, Callum. We're going to see some of the, the exciting horses that we saw at Cheltenham maybe come back and have another go. And as you say, with this kind of trainers' championship, it's going to be a good week for racing. Bit of a different feel to the Grand National way. Less runners. It's going to be run a bit earlier. I'm looking forward to this week actually. Yeah, it's. it's I mean, if Cheltenham, Cheltenham's for the the purest, you know, this is kind of the, the, the weekend where you know the nation gets involved. You know, there is yeah. baggage with that as well. You know, you have your animal rights crew coming in, but. Um, now this is kind of the spectacle where we can kind of showcase it, you know, out with the racing bubble and and, and you can see racing for not for also like so Liverpool will be busy again. It always is. It's it's an iconic kind of it's an iconic British sporting event. Really, one of the most ones you know up there with it. Wimbledon, the Open Championship for me, it's it's it's, it's, it's simply simply brilliant. Um, the the rare thing is that we're probably going to get soft heavy ground first time in you know quite yeah. a while. Tiger over that one year. Soft ground, but it's it's just going to be soft and heavy, and it's been like that everywhere. I think like Kent and Boxing Day is probably the last the last good ground that we've actually seen in the racing front. So it's just been a, a very wet start to the year. Right, what we're going to do is we've got we say I think we've got four Grade Ones on the Thursday, four on the Friday, and three on the Saturday. So we're going to do a wee bit of an in-depth preview on all of those races, and the other kind of three races on the Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We'll we'll kind of talk about them briefly, and then we'll do, obviously, our bumper Grand National preview, and then we're going to do our best bet, a lay, and then each way of the week. So, Callum, we'll start, obviously, on Thursday, uh, 1.45. We've got the Manifesto Novices Chase, and it looks at the moment that we're going to see the rematch from the Turners 1 and 2, Grade Awning versus Jimmy's Destiny. You've got the likes of Nickelback, Kelly de Thompson there, Corbett's Cross might come over. But it really is all about the front two and Grey Dawning, obviously, really, really good in the turners. What do you think here? Do you think he'll do it again? 
Yeah, I mean, on bad ground, you know, I, th- I think he's you'd expect him to confirm the form, isn't it? It's just whether they go fast enough for him because he probably wants three miles over this trip. But, you know, he's, he's classy enough and versatile enough to overcome it. And, and yet it's, it's pretty hard to make a case of James to say maybe turn the form around the race at Cheltenham kind of... The two of them kind of dominated and, 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 and struck struck the front quite quickly and basically jumped everything into submission and, and absolutely controlled it. Um, there is that kind of turnaround from Cheltenham to entry. It's quite quick, you know. Sometimes a lot of horses can't quite, you know, reproduce that level of form once they've won from Cheltenham to to back here. Um, I, I think Grey Dawning is definitely the right favourite. He's probably the most likely winner, and I, th- I do expect him to beat Jenny's Jenny's Destiny again. Um, Found the 50 going back up and trip is interesting. He's kind of shaped as if he's been a two mile away. I think he'd probably get you know out, out pointed by Gaelic Warrior. It was certainly no disgrace, but um, he, 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 he's one of these funny horses where he'd actually think he's, he's now more of a two miler when you thought at the start of the season, the two and a half miler. Uh, and you're kind of, I'm finding it hard to kind of make a case for him going back up and trip. But I think LIT Tom going up and trip is a good move. He's always kind of out of his yeah. comfort zone. Uh, the last day at Cheltenham um, in the Arkle. Um, probably did well to box on third. I think he's the main danger. Um, definitely, I think he's the main danger to to, to um, the favourite here, the Grey Dawning, because I think going up and trip will unlock improvement. He was left behind at the Arkle last day. The, just the worry about him is that he's not the biggest and he does lack scope over a fence and he, he could he could miss a couple. And Aintree can be a bit stiffer jumping aside than, than Cheltenham at times. I very much think Grey Dawn will be hard to beat here again. I, th- I think eleven to eight. I think anything a shade of odds again is odds against is a good price. I I don't see Jenny's destiny turning the form. The one that you would obviously think maybe could kind of cause a, a wee surprise with Corbett's Cross if he goes, but I think if they're going to go, they might go for the race on the Saturday. Uh, no, not the Saturday. Sorry, the Friday. So I think it could be interesting to see. But I just think Grey Dawn is really going to be hard to beat here. And and like you. Yeah. I don't see I don't see anything reversing the form with him to be honest. I think as well, probably entry suits him better than Cheltenham does. Just oh, yeah, I, th- I think the fact. I mean, again, that was another kind of negative for for me going into Cheltenham what was was kind of how he dealt with the track. But the, the new course kind of helped him a little bit. Um, the other thing against Jenny's destiny for me is the presence of Nickelback in this race because they yeah. both want to front run. They don't don't really know yeah. how to how to go another way. So again, that's probably just going to set it up even more for. Grey Dawning, maybe LIT Tom. But I mean, they're the two that I would definitely be focusing yeah. on at the moment. Yeah, so it's two relatively good votes for Grey Dawning. We'll move into the anniversary four year old juvenile hurdle at 20 past two in Thursday Callum. And Sergino leads the market, and obviously he missed Cheltenham. Maybe the only thing you're wondering is what is the form of the Henderson Yard? Is it any better than it was three weeks ago? And if it is, I think Sergino will be the good thing here, but again, I'm just, I'm not sure. I just want to see positive vibes. I think Henderson's one run up, one one and eight runners. I just worry. I just worry. I, it's kind of a race I don't know whether to touch until the day. Yeah, I mean, I think the market will probably will probably tell you know if he's if, if there's confidence behind him and he's back to any forty six, then it's you know, that's probably it's going to be a good sign mm-hmm. of the health of the, the Henderson Yard. Um, it's just very inconclusive, you know, because we've been a lot of rained off. And, and things like that. So we know he handles the ground uh, from a toy, probably does. And on his French form, you know, French horses normally deal with that. I mean, Nicky Henderson's his whole yard generally are they generally want better ground. Um mm-hmm. it's a bit it's a bit of a worry and, and, and it's inconclusive whether whether the yard are in form or not, because even you simply don't really know. I mean, there's not a lot that there's not a lot to go on since Cheltenham. So so yeah, I mean he's he's hovering around Evans. He's definitely the most potential, he's the most likely winner, but again, it's just that unknown about the yard. Now, Cargis seems to be Willie Mullins' main hope here. Uh, mm-hmm. It's ran quite well. I think a less taxing stamina trip here will suit her. Um, I think Aintree's probably more suitable than Cheltenham for her. Yeah. And, you know, she's she's going to be bang there. Um, and Paul Nichols is raving about Caliph de Berley as much as his new. Uh, acquisition Colwell Potter and you know he's going to come in fresh and this has been the target since Kempton for him so you've got Nurburgring Green Calaconti are like solid reliable types where well, they're very they're good enough to, to pick up the pieces if if, if others if others misfire um, yeah I mean I, I do like Calif de Berley uh, 
I just Forty think, nine. you know, 92, 5-1, to 92-5-1, uh, to one, I, I, th- I think that's probably around the ballpark. I mean, if Sergino wins, yeah, you can kind of let him maybe be a superstar and win, but I mean, the yard is just, you, you don't, you don't know when steaming in five to four early doors and and one at Aintree might might not be the best way to the best way to go. So um, yeah, Calif to barely for me. Yeah, it's. I think he would be the one. I would say that is probably the most likely. Knuckles always seems to send something exciting to this that he kind of leaves Cheltenham Cheltenham for, and this could be one. I I kind of think if. Sergino, I think the vibes are in the day. If Sergino is getting well supported, I know he'll, he'll probably be odds on then a win, but I think Calif de Berli could be the best of the rest. But I think, again, there's some good ones in here, and I think it's all dependent on the day. We'll move into the entry bowl. I think this could be a really good race, Callum. You've got Jerry Colom at 5-4, to four, Shishkin 3-1, to one, Corbett's Cross is in there at 5-1. to one. I want to get your thoughts on that. And you've got the likes of a Hoy Senor, Brave Man's Game, Hewick at 8-1, to one. could Hewick do it again? But Jerry Colomb versus Shiskin Callum, it's a it's a battle that we well certainly thought we might see the two of them race against each other at Cheltenham, but I think this could be quite fascinating. Again, yeah, you just hope that Henderson Yard is informing. You've seen Sergino do the business before and that, that higher heightened confidence in the in the battle here. I mean uh, Jerry Colomb, I mean I think he's been kept fresh relatively for a spring campaign. You know, he's he's still getting his ground. Um, I think he's improving all the time, and I, I do think he's got the resolution to take back-to-back hard races. And yeah, and I can see why he's been kind of well supported in this. I do think he's the most likely winner. At Go Cup, yeah, it's a big run. Has it left a mark? I'm not, I'm not sure with him. It will. Um, I, think, I think he's a very solid, efficient horse, and you know, Adrian, I think it'd suit Shishkin. Like, it's just a yard again. You know, you don't know, um, and and he's got his quirks as well. He never seems to run. Two races I like, and he's 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 ten. He's getting on a bit, you know. It's a bit, it's a bit. Was last year's him. performance in this probably his best? Yeah, he was stepping up and trip to unlock that kind of improvement, didn't it? But it was, was laboured for a long way until until mm-hmm. the last where he getting gets in top of Hoy Senor, and it's just you know everything everything to him seems to be kind of a, a bit of a struggle. He needs he needs a lot of cajoling yeah. to get to get interest and be involved. Um, I just think Jerry Colon might might have too much for him. Um, Corbett's cross interesting going up here. I mean, again, it's just going to aim at Mullins prep of like you don't really know what what is what, what his ceiling is yet at all um, from replacing one national Lynch chase easily. Um, that certainly wouldn't have left the mark on him. And you know, he's, he's pretty he's pretty consistent. Um, yeah, he, he'd have to be buying the old grounds going against you, isn't it? You'd be surprised if he ran. Yeah. Um, Brave man's game again had a hard time of it at Cheltenham, didn't he? And it's it's it might be. It might be tough for him to bounce back here, and again, he's, he's probably got unfavoured conditions as well with the rest of these. Uh, the Ryanair experiment didn't work with Hoy Senor, but I mean, he could bounce back no. up, up and trip. He could bounce back up and trip, you know, go forward, you know, try and dictate things, and maybe he's the kind of each way horse here at tens. Um, but he has he has gone a little bit south this season, to be honest. He's not really put in, you know, one one performance where you think, yeah, he can he can go and he could go and win this. Um, so yeah, protector that might come here. Probably more likely to go the two and a half mile race, isn't he? So mm-hmm. yeah, I, mean, I think it's Jerry Colomb's to to lose personally. Yeah, I kind of think Jerry Colomb to me. If I think the vibes are good, as you say, he's not very rarely in the middle of April. He's going to get the ground that is right up his street, and I just think that's going to play to his favour. Very very good in this last year, where the ground was not soft. So. I think he might be a sort of horse that could like a tree, and I thought he's as long as the Gold Cup hasn't left a mark, I would say he's probably a strong player in this race. The a tree hurdle though could be very, very wide open. You've got Bob Ollinger at even money, and Perry Pass nine to four. Irish Point is probably going to go here, I would imagine, and then you've got the likes of Langer Dan, Lucia, Neiman Lyon. Callum, I don't know if I would be piling in and Bob Ollinger at evens against these two. Yeah, that's a fantastic race. You know, the top three, you know, the you know, Imperial Pass has got a bit to prove this season, but you know, going up and trip looks looks a good move. He's reasonably fresh I'm back from Leopoldstown where he was third and Bob Ollinger was in front of him at Leopoldstown the last day. Um he's deliberately been kept fresh from this. Uh, so I think that's probably why he's favourite. Um and Irish Point, you know, probably is the best form of them all in the champion huddle last time. If if he comes here, the only thing is will he run here or will he run at Adrian mm-hmm. at all? 
up against Bob yeah. Ollinger. Um, that's that's the kind of thing. So, but if he's confirmed, then I, I, you can see the market kind of changing. Um, because I do think Irish points get maybe a bit more progress in them than than Bob Ollinger. Bob Ollinger has got the freshness angle. You know, he's been laid out for it, which is a big big plus. Um, Perry Pass just is a little bit to prove for me. Um, this season been a bit of a write off, but you know, he could he could pop up. You know, he's, yeah, he is certainly good enough. They both they all they all like the ground. Um. It's it's pretty hard to see anything else landing a blow in this. Um, to be honest, I mean, I'm interested to see how Iberico Lord runs and, and West Balboa. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think they've got two performances in them that that, that can kind of um, place. I think going up and trips a good move for Iberico Lord. I mean, I think he's been winning in spite of his class over two miles. I do think he's a two and a half miler. And West Balboa has been wanting this ground for for some time. So yeah, um, two of them might run well. Out of the top three, if Irish Point takes his chance, I'd probably, probably lean with him. And that's where I was kind of leaning as well. I thought if Irish Point goes here, I don't think, I don't know if Bob Ollinger to me is, is even money material in this race. I think in Perry Pass, as you say, is a lot to prove. And I think Irish Point has probably got the best form out of the, the bunch. Obviously, he's second at the champion huddle, I thought was better than anything we've seen from the R2. Not to discount Bob Ollinger, but I think if Irish Point goes here, I think he's the one to beat for me. And I, I would like to see, well, you would imagine, obviously, Jack Kennedy will be on Irish Point, and I think that will be a, a very telling thing. So I'm going to lean towards Irish Point if it goes. Right, we've got other three races on the Thursday, Callum. We've got the Fox Hunters Chase. We have the Red Rum Handicap Chase and the Mayor's uh, Bumper. I'm going to give you the phone in a minute. The only one out the, the only race out of the three where I've got a, a fancy is in the, the Mayor's Bumper. I really liked the Ben Pauling horse, Diva Luna, that shaped up. At, I think it was Market Raisin she ran in. Really, really, really liked how she shaped up. I think she could be one that, that really likes this test. She won in soft ground. She looks to me to be a kind of big, quite a big strapping horse. I think I don't really like much in, in front of her. I don't think Aurora Vega to me is what we thought she would be. I'm not sure about Honky Tonk Highway either. Baby Kate, possibly, it was probably the, the one to take from the the one at Leopardstown, but I just think Diva Luna at seven to one, I think is good each way value. But apart from that, I'm kind of waiting to the day with the next two. If I be a for the rest of the day one. Yeah, I mean, I, the Mayor's bumper is not kind of it's not my kind of forty at all. But I mean, I think Honky Tonk Highway is probably not bad for scaling. I don't know she goes in the ground. I was kind of leaning that way, but it's it's a race that I get very limited interest in. Um, famous Claremont, the Fox Hunters, you know, looks. Probably a pretty good thing here, you know, at nine to two, five to one. Main sin no mind winning at Cheltenham is a bit of a shock. The Irish ones have kind of ran in between quite well. Um, and, and the ones that were kind of deliberately laid out for entry seem to be kind of missing it now, with you know, uh, quite a lot of the Derek Christie high profile horses they are not really going. And, yeah, uh, it's on the line, probably will run, but you know, he's he's been busy enough, so yeah, I mean, I, I think you know, over course and distance, well proven. I think he can take some stopping, and you know, you'd imagine unexpected parties still pretty well in, you know, in the red rum as well. You know, eight, eight to one in the field. You know, he's got a talent there that's got a good winning sequence. Um, and Dan Skelton has a good hand in this. Um, you'd probably just see which one Harry Skelton rides and and and, and follow follow suit there. Pembroke's in there. Um, I think dancing alone could run well again, but he's he's still a bit high in the weights, isn't he? And he's not yeah. really. The handicapper's not really relenting, relenting on him too much. So, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, I think an unexpected party can probably do the Grand Annual and, and Red Rum double. Um, I think I think he's more than capable. An eight pound rise isn't overly harsh for for what he achieved there. Yeah, no, I, I think it could be. I think he's the one out of that field you would say is probably the most most likely. Right, we'll move into day two, Callum. Uh, we'll start with the Mild Main Novices Chase uh, over three miles. I'm really probably my strongest play of the week, as we'll find out later. I think I know the way you're thinking in here at five to two is pretty, pretty serious. I think it's seriously good value. He puts in a performance anyway, like he did in the Kim Muir. I think he's rock solid here, and I think he's going to get his ground as well. So, uh, very, very strong for me here. Yeah, he's finally in a grade one, which you know we know he should be. So, uh, yeah, that's a good sign. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, even the numbers that he put up in the Kim Muir, I mean. I mean that he's, he's probably definitely going to be the right the right favourite. Um, 
I'm interested in Oroko. Um, okay. He's, he definitely needs to step up and trip. He'd come on from the last day. It was very touch and go at Cheltenham. And, and, you know, he ran well and often fifth, kept pulling on. And he showed signs of promise. Um, John Joe Neal Jr. jocked up already. Positive sign. Um, I think I think he can maybe get closer. I mean, you've got the ultimate winner, Canty Classical as well. He's entitled to take yeah. his chance. Corbett's Cross probably going elsewhere. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's another kind of, it's a really fascinating race. Um yeah, I might, might stick with Oroko. Giovinco could could run well, I suppose. You know, he was the one that, that was in the three miler grade one at least and and, and and ran pretty well in third. You know, you'd think entry is more suitable than Cheltenham for him. Uh, I know how Lucinda Russell's yard can come alive at this meeting. So yeah, I mean there's there's quite a few cases you'd make. The way I know the way you think and did it, you know, it, it just kinda you know, blew the blew the eyes off you, didn't it? Really it was it was that kind of eye popping, you know. I oh, know it's a Kim Murray's probably you know, an exposed handicap, I mean, he's entitled to do it, but a £13 rise for that, you know, looks looks fair enough. You know, he's in the high 150s and he looks capable of running to that. So I think that's probably going to be enough to enough to win. Um, I think if, if either ever Chianti Classical are going to have a step back, it's probably Chianti Classical because it was in a more competitive handicap and he was probably more kind of primed and laid out for it than I know you think it was. So, yeah, and... And you know, if it gets really attritional, I think that you know that will suit him as well. It can be a bit of safe jumper out the back, but yeah, I, th- I think it's between him and a Rocco for me. Um, I might back a Rocco because it's just a bigger price, but you know, that's that's kind of thing. But yeah, I, I know the way you think it's got a massive chance. Let's move into the two fifty five in the Friday column. I think this is a a really really exciting race if these all make it. Uh, we've got Mystical Power and Slade Steel, obviously the first and second in the Supreme at five to two. Uh, Firefox is in there four to one. Caldwell Potter and the new colours of the uh, Nickel Shards. You've got Brighter Days Ahead. You've also got Dysart Enos in there. All these make it, Callum. This could be a really exciting race. Who you got and why? Yeah, I mean, I, I think Caldwell Potter maybe because, you know, he's, he's missed it all and, and, and he's fresh. You know, I think this might be more of a speed test. So, Mystical Power should probably turn the form around with Slade Steel here uh, from the Supreme. Um Firefox, I think, shaping up as if he wants to maybe be a bit further now. But he was a bit unlucky at Cheltenham, but mm-hmm. he, he might come forward again. You, you wouldn't rule them out with any confidence. Um, I said, you know, it's probably a bit to find good and graded company here, but you know, she needs to run somewhere, and it, it might as well be here because I mean, she does have pace and she's getting some useful concessions. Um, Cole Potter's going to get his ground. I'd imagine he's been properly laid out for this. It's form at Christmas. Could work out a bit better. That's the only kind of worry thing. I mean, Predator's Gold hasn't done much for it. You know, didn't name really neither. I'm sure did pull up, but again, it was kind of he was one. He was one for the the county hurdle, wasn't he? But mm-hmm. I don't think you could really learn much about that. Um, so yeah, you you could poke holes in his Christmas form a little bit, but he's been fresh. He's a big imposing horse, and he should relish this. And just just being fresh might might be enough for him to actually. To actually win this, um, Mr. Giff didn't get home either. You know, mm-hmm. he'd be interesting if he went in the Supreme. He just didn't quite get up the hill well as some of them. Carted into it quite well. Same with Asian Master was fourth, and I expected Atlantic to run well. You know, drop bank mm-hmm. trip, and you'd expect he'd be reverted back to more prominent tactics. Um, so he he probably seen it better light. So so maybe maybe I'll Atlantic each way from from a price perspective. You know, 14, 16s. Yeah, you know, I do think I do think he's kind of. Do you think he's a bit of a two miler? Really, he, he did. He did travel into it quite well, and then he, he didn't see me pick up. My Patrick Miles did say he's probably not quite his best. So I mean, if I return back to that and back to positive tactics. He could, he could maybe place and hit the frame at a decent price. I think Town End will ride him. Yeah, I think there's a good chance that he will. Um, he's definitely going. You know, and Mister Giff. Yeah. I, yeah, I, th- I think I mean Atlantic's higher rated than Mr. Leaf and Asian Masters, so yeah, you, you'd think that you know if he takes his chance, he'll he'll definitely go there. Um, yeah, probably rise him. I mean, if Paul Tennant's involved, they probably won't be fourteen to one on the day. No, absolutely not. I also think as well. I think if this was run on better ground, I think Mystical Power would reverse the form of Slade Steel. I'm not sure now, and I just don't think I, I don't know if Slade Steel, despite having known he's probably a better boss over further. I don't know if this is going to be his boat. This kind of quite snappy two miles, a costly entry. 
I'm probably with you. I kind of think Caldwell Potter out the the ones at the top is the one I'm leaning towards. Goes well fresh. We've seen him do it in heavy ground at Christmas. I just uh, again, I just think this is the sort of as you say. I think this will play, this will play into his his boat a lot more. I don't know if Golden Ace is maybe big at twelves. Though if she's going, but if she's anywhere near it, I think she could run a big race here. I think she. I don't think that was a flash in the pan with she did at Cheltenham. I think she is. She could potentially be quite a, a classy operator. So I'm probably going to play Caldwell Potter and maybe have a wee stab on her each way if she if she turns up. But I think this is a really looking forward to this race, actually. I think this could be one of the most exciting races of the week. We then have the Merlin Chase at 3.30 Callum and very open. John Bond leads the market 94. You've got the same worries that you we did with, with Sergino and Shishkin. Pat Dory in there as well, 3-1, to one, protector at, obviously Ryanair winner. If he likes a band bridge, I don't think he'll go. Envoy Allen, Conflated's in there. Probably an interesting race, Carl, on the side. Yeah, and I, I think John Bone's the right favourite, and you'd expect him to win, really, if, if he's okay. going back to his best. Um, I think he's, on, on, on his days, comfortably superior to these. Um, maybe, maybe one better ground, but... I just, I just think you'd, you'd assume that he can, uh, he's, he's going to get back to back his best. Uh, but you know, you'll have a line in the Henderson yard. You know, if Sergino runs well, you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I think that would give give you confidence because yeah, he's just he's just better than the rest. We pick Dory. He's, he's kind of grade two material. Uh, really, can get the old grade one when it when it opens up. Um, I think he's short enough here. Me, he's better ask it. Kempton, you know, tends to enjoy it more right handed. Um, Protecting that big effort in the Ryan here, that's whether he can back it up. Um, he could do, you know, again, he 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 does really he does run well at entry, so you know he's he's the danger. Um, Banbridge Crown's a concern at Envoy Allen. He can get outstayed by protecting that in the Ryan here. You know, you think that now that he's ten, you know, you think that that might be that might happen again, again here. And I know it's kind of more kind of speed based entry, but you know, it's a long, it's a long straight. You know. It, 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 the, the result of complexion of races after the last can, can change dramatically entry, so it, it can suit steers if it's run to suit. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you know, if, if the Henderson Yard is, is, is not firing, go with protect that, and if it is, I'd say with John Bone. Yeah, I think, I think, I think we'll, have, we'll have enough clues in the first day to know that if John Bond's worth signing with or not. I think John Bond, if he's up to his best, will probably be. We had to beat here. I've said since last year, I think two and a half miles could be his boat. I really do. I think he's arguably going to be better as he gets. So I think he's maybe going to turn into the kind of next Shishkin in terms of you might see him improve for a step up and trip as, as he gets older. Probably side towards protector that if if it was to, if John Bond was to be out of form. I don't like Pick Dory as a grade one horse. I just don't. And I think that's going to be quite open actually, but we'll move into the 440 column, the Sefton. A uh, race that I've been keen to get your thoughts on for, for quite a few weeks. When the prices of this first came out, I noticed a horse at, I think it was 33s at that point. He's now 20s. Horse you really like in Meyertown. Now, the 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 Russell team have won this, I think, two last two years? Or two out of the last three? Last two, yeah. Last two. Could they make it three in a row with, with this guy? I think he's got the potential, you know, they always earmark their best novice at this, and, you know, he's been that for a long, a long way. Um, he's beat air in January, where he apparently needed a run, and two miles looked too short from him. stepped him up two and a half miles, and he was he was, he was going to win by a mile in February uh, from a subsequent winner. Uh, he fell at the last, you know, just a bit of inexperience kind of caught him out. He was, he was about to kind of absolutely hack up in well impressive style. He, he made amends at, at Kelso, Um in, in, in March, just before Cheltenham, and, and by you know shedding, he's been tagging, winning in, in good style. Um, straight at one, two, three. I, I think there's there's so much more to come from him, um, mm-hmm. particularly over fences. You know, same owners had a Hoy Senor who won this. They had Apple Away who won it last year. Um, coming reasonably fresh under the radar, and he was thirty three at start. It snapped up straight away as soon as you kindly alerted me to it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was when he was in the paddock. Here, you know, it was it was a big seventeen runner race. You know, it was full of these yeah. kind of pretty decent novices coming up from the north, and you know, it's very rare that you can just go to a paddock and, and spot one head and shoulders above them all easily. And and he what he was that you know he 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 looked he looked different class, um, and very rare. You know, it, 
it aired that I see one, you know, that it's kind of like that, that, that seems to be well clear and, uh, and, be, and be right about it. So, yeah, him each way, I'm definitely backing. Um, whether he's good enough, whether he's, he's, he's got, it's a big step up, you know, it, yeah. that, that can't be denied. But I don't think the battle was, was, was terrific, you know, and, no. you know, a lot of them, a lot of them would have felt, had a hard race there. You know, Dancing City certainly did, didn't quite get home. You know, the jukebox man ran an absolute blinder, but he was caught by Stella's story, you know. Can they, you know, can they get to that level again? It's it's pretty difficult. Um, better days ahead is interesting. Green Tommy Wrong probably wasn't correct at the last day, so he's, he's got a bit to prove. Uh, Shag Bob is, is interesting as well, Nicky Henderson. It would be interesting to see what he would have done now but battle it. But, yeah. If, if he taking his chance there, but you know he, he does like soft ground. He's, he's a good three mile steer. Um, he's learning all the time. I think him. He's the one that he's the one that attracts me at the top of the market anyway. And yeah, and hopefully my town can can go well for the Scots again. Yeah, I think I, I think I have to back my town. I've been sold on it. I, I think better days ahead to go in here is interesting. I think he is potentially one that could be. I, I think the, I don't think the battle this year was strong. And I think uh, you look at better days ahead, the way he won the Martin Pike, the way he's kind of threatened to be very interesting. He's only rated two pounds less than Stella Story. Yeah. And I mean that's and a great one winner Stella to Martin Pike winner. And Stella Story wasn't meant to meant to run in that because if Croke Park yeah. was making it, then he'd be fitting Croke Park's in here also at twenty fives. Yeah. He's probably interested because I'm really, you know, looking forward to actually seeing what he can do after not being right at Nice and that. Mm -hmm. Grade one, where Gordon Elliott tends to target some very good horses. I mean, Firefox yeah. was there as his pace horse. I think this guy was meant to be the stair horse. And, you know, they rate him higher than the Bartlett winner. And I'd assume the Martin Pike winner as well. So, I mean, I think he's the best of the steam. We just haven't been able to quite see it yet. Um, mm -hmm. But, I mean, Jack Kennedy's surely going to ride Stellar Stella Story, isn't he? You can't get yeah, off. For sure, yeah. You can't get off the Bartlett winner anyway, even if you think you might be riding the wrong one, but sometimes the form book and previous results simply dictate to jockeys who, who they really should ride. And you're not going to go for Albert Burt or winner in the entry equivalent, really. So, uh, so yeah, um, yeah, Crook Park interesting me at big prices as well. But Shannon Bob near the top of the market, and but Meyer Town winning would be absolutely magnificent. That would be very good. It'd probably be the early weekend. Right, we've got other races. We've obviously we've got the William Hill handicap hurdle at 220. It's always quite an interesting race. Uh, you've then got the Topham, which um kind of got a strong fancy, but I'll let you go first. And then at 5.15, we have a very interesting amateur riders uh, handicap hurdle and conditionals, which I'll, I'll get your thoughts on in a minute. Callum, any strong fancies for the Friday at the moment or...? Wait 220 the making headway is a, a horse I quite like. Uh, That's the one I like as well. You know, it needs to go up and trip as well. Um, two mile, two and a half. That, that seems to be it seems to be a good move. I mean, Dan Skelton seems to have plenty at the top of the market that, that might be that might be well in as well. Um, to wait and see, but I, I do quite like making headway. I think there's, I think yeah. there's a big uh, I think step up and trip will do them the world of good as well. Yeah, but, I mean, they, were, they were kind of thinking that sand down at the end of the season. The yeah. final was, was kind of their big kind of their big target, so you do have to kind of wonder if this is if this is really the day for him. Um, the top him, I mean, it, it's it's team maybe don't I mean shake him up, Harry. Can he keep improving? He's creeping up the weights now. Um, this is Bill Baxter's race, Don, isn't it? You know, I mean, he, mm -hmm. he quite likes this James Bowen and Board who consistently wins it. Um, it's flat to deceive, but it might it might just be you know operation. Let's get him down to this mark and, and see what happens. Uh, you know, one three four. He was at one forty at the start of the year, so I mean, handicappers is giving him every chance. I can see why he's popular. Ten seven round there, a low weight seems very feasible. I think your darling is dangerous, but the ground's a bit of a worry. Um, see the way could go well again, but again. Ground for him is not great. James Abelli could run well off a big weight. Um, seeing this intermediate trip seems to be at his best. He's quite a good stayer as well. Um, you know, the marathon kind of trip, it's just tested him a little bit too much of, of, of late, but I mean, he, he can go well. Fantastic Lady could also go well. You know, she's got um, some decent kind of form over the big fences at Edry as well. Um, Lynch Lizard likes it here and, and, and things like that. So, so yeah, there's a, there's obviously there's a typical kind of long list um, that I handicap wise so it has to be drawn to to Bill Baxter and you know the last race I've not got much of an opinion on. <laughs> Just follow, follow, follow the jockeys what you like. I mean I backed our champ the last day, but I don't think he wants 
it's I think once ground is as, as bad as this, um, you know, go down to you can probably probably run quite well. Um Bruchio as well in, in the soft ground, he he he'd possibly like it. But um but yeah, yeah. It's a race where you can probably follow the jockeys. Affidel could go better here and softly ground the flatter track. Probably the best jockey in the race, did not he? Freddie Ginger will be on board. You know, he's, he's got this kind of... He ran really well from the front of the county hurdle, which I think is you know, it's always going to be really good form. Um, I think he could probably do something pretty similar again at Aintree. He always takes his racing quite well as well. So, yeah, Affidel has to be under strong consideration there. The one I liked in the last race was one that I don't know if they're going to go here or going towards the Scottish Champion Hurdle. I think the Kelso Specialist, I thought Cracking Rhapsody at 14 was quite big, but I just don't know who's going to be on board. I think the, any, the, the last couple of races I've seen him at Kelso, I've been thinking he needs a step up, and they're not too dissimilar in terms of kind of the way they're running kind of Kelso and Aintree, so I wouldn't be massively surprised if he runs runs quite well at 14s. I just don't know who's going to be on board, and I, I think it's, it's going to be quite interesting who lines up here. Again, at Fidel, you're looking at the jockey on board and you're thinking that's the best jockey to have in a conditional jockey's race. So I kind of think I think the fight is quite tough in terms of the handicaps, but probably my strongest fancy of the day here. The, day, uh, the weekend is on the, the Friday and it is the form of I know the way you're thinking. Let's move into Saturday, Carl, and we'll start with the Mersey at Novices Hurdle. Uh, we've just got entries of these today, so they might not be 100% right. You've got Slade Steel. At three to one, uh, Clint Caldwell Potter fives. You've got likes of Firefox, Balaraki Dicky. It's whoever's not going to turn up in the, the race on Friday will probably go here. You would think if Slade still goes here, probably better for him than the, the two mile race. I think so. Many thought that gentleman only because of Bally Burns' existence being the Ubain the Supreme and still was still good enough to win that. Um, I mean, there's a lot of talk about Balaraki Dicky. Um, yeah, he might, he might be the kind of Mullins one that's coming into this. Uh, which would be interesting. Cole Potter could go here. He could comfortably handle a step up and trip. I think Firefox is more likely to stay at the, at the two mile one uh, at the moment. But um, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit wait and see. Um, El Atlantic as well, but I think the plan is to go two miles. So yeah, you kind of have to wait and see a little bit. Django B might run well after you know running well in that race. Kelso behind cracking maps. He was obviously you know, well in off a of featherweight. He, he was he was penalised um, in that in that. Kind of race, two mile two. Oh, yeah, I was behind personal ambition, of course. You know, you ran in the handicap. Um, yeah, I I think personal ambition could run well again. Um, the ground soft, n- not ideal. You know, a lot of these British horses might be kind of hampered by, by by the way the ground's going slightly. Um, I would be I would be more sweet and slide steel here than I would be in, in the two mile race. Yeah, no, I think I think that as well. I quite like the vibes of Brother Ricky Dicky. I'm just not sure if he's if he's got enough fit experience to win a race like last year. We'd probably lean towards Slade Steel in this race, but another very very interesting one. We'll probably not know the full hang, uh, details until we get declarations. Uh, Liverpool Huddle, Callum Tia Hooper, obviously really impressive Steers Huddle winner, goes to go one better in this race as well. He did it at Cheltenham. Callum went one better. Can he do it here? Yeah, I mean, it's just whether he can back it up or not. Uh, you'd expect him to. I mean, 94. The, the, the thing was, what, what knocked his freshness off last year was having a run. I'm not, he's, he's best fresh. This, mm-hmm. he, he, his, his edge might have been knocked off him a little bit, so I'm I'm much more wary of him here than would be at Cheltenham. Um, Falling Porter has run well in this subsequently after Cheltenham, but he's, he's not really improved his form. Irish Point, probably another race. Crambo doesn't win it this soft. And 12 year old Sav barely, you know, if, if you've got a stronger pace here, I think he's got an each way chance. You know, in what at Cheltenham, he was fifth, and you think, oh, well, he is, he is on downgrade. Um, he was staying on to the line, it was a crawl at Cheltenham. I think there'd be much more pace in this, and I, th- I think that'll suit him. And, and I, th- I think he's not a bad bet each way at eights. Um, because Apple away's in this, you know, she'll go forward. Um, there might there might just be a bit more pace on here. Dash will drash. probably will go forward again. Um, and, and and yeah, I mean that's that's kind of it's, it's kind of about it. It's not it's not really that deep. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm leaning towards Sarah the Barely each way because I don't trust the top two to replicate the Cheltenham form. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And Sadler Bailey still looks the best of the rest. And, and you know, what, what is a pretty exposed three mile staying division? Uh, yeah, I mean, the one that I kind of thought was an interesting runner if they decide to go here would be a Hidden Valley Lake at 14s. But again, I'm not sure if they are going here. But I think that he was probably, he shaped up quite well in the Boyne Huddle. And again, I think the ground will probably suit him as well. So I might play him each way. I, I don't know if Tia Hupu. Again, it, might, it could be a tough act to follow and he'd probably just say if he was, I don't think doubt his class, but I think it might just be kind of tough to go with him at 2-1 to one after what he did at Cheltenham. So I'm going to play Hidden Valley Lake at 14s just to fade the turn up with him. Final grade one of the weekend column is the McGill Novices Hub. Although we don't have prices for this, but we've got some interesting entries. JPR1's in there. You've got Hercule Desoy. Found a 50 Jello, you've got Alexa Kalisios, you've got Unexpected Party. I really don't know who these are going to shape up, Callum, but if it was if every horse turned up here, I think I would lean towards found a 50. Yeah, um, I mean, Nickelback could come here now as well, so you, you go yeah. two miles, they've jocked up. So, so there is kind of dual entries here that we've got to kind of, got to kind of deal with. Um, see, the, the most, I mean, not from Ben's, but the most, I mean, what, what do you want is now with Lucinda Russell and entered in this. I see, which, I, which I found pretty interesting. Uh, just just seeing that as, a, as an entry. Um, Sad approach could even run away. I mean, Colexios, I'm interested to see if Colexios goes because he wasn't really given a fair crack at things in the article. He was one of those that was messed about at the start and, and, and missed the break. Um, he's probably got a bit more to offer. Matata will go forward. So, I mean, I think I think there's going to be a reasonable pace here, but yeah, it's it's kind of the best of the rest without Gaelic Warrior, isn't it? And will Elite Tomp come here? Not so sure. I think he's more suitable to the to the race in the Thursday, um, and so so he's found the fifty. So yeah, the, the, for for, for two mile race, you know, there's there's not much there's not much kind of genuine pace here, and you know, if if Nickelback does come here, it's, it's, it seems unlikely, but they might because of the ground. And he could he could lead them a merry dance in the front, uh, along with Matata. Um possible. I think Matata's probably get better form, stronger. Um and I've still got a lot of time for GPR one as as a horse, you know. I just think the ground went does that went totally against him at Cheltenham. Like was... Yeah, but he's 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 won and soft like that as well. You know, the yard yeah. kind of, the yard were kind of in a permanent lull as well. And they're kind of going back they are very hot and cold, the Tizards. Mm-hmm. Um He's he's interesting. Liberty Hunter was unlucky in the in the Grand Annual. He could probably go well. He handles it. He handles bad ground quite well. So, so yeah, there's plenty plenty of options and ones to consider. Um, maybe Matat at the moment. We'll move into the five thirty five, which is well. Actually, we'll just we'll kind of ground up the, the other races. We've we've three other races on the Saturday. We've got the William Hill Handicap Hurdle. Again, a lot of entries in there, kind of staying handicap probably. We've got the handicap chase. Yeah, it likes a King of Rythorpe, I think, is one I quite like in that race. But 5.35, Callum, I'm very interested in a horse that I was quite taken with just after Cheltenham. Uh, Castle Eagles for the Morans, it's now with Ollie Murphy. I thought he shaped really, really nicely in the race. He won't weather be just after Cheltenham. The turnaround might be too quick, but I think in terms, I think he could have a bit of potential, and I think this could be a decent a decent chance for him here. Yellow Clay will probably be favourite in the same colours, but I think Castle Livers could run a big race. Yeah, I mean, just wait till the team see what turns up. Yeah. But, I mean, it's 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 a bumper. Um, <laughs> and I'm not I'm not really too bothered about, about it. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's one of these think, opinions. I mean, I think Castle Ivers, yeah, he, he was very good at weather. He wasn't. He beat beat a nice fair go brown horse by seven lengths. Um, you know, travelling powerfully, strongly. You know, always prone, always handy, and and, and doing it really well in the yard are in, are in reasonable form, you know, when brewing up a storm and, and, and things like that. So, so yes, I can I'm, I can see myself maybe maybe go again. I think Farland's a good horse for for Paul Nichols as well. I mean, he always is mm-hmm. one that's very good, uh, useful at this. Um, tends to target this more than more than Cheltenham. Uh, Mister Meggett is one. John Joe's it's definitely yeah. good as well. Um, so yeah, there's, there's undoubtedly going to be some some very nice prospects in it. It's just just a bumper, and it doesn't make much betting appeal to me. <laughs> right, let's move into the big one, Callum. The Randolph Health Grand National at four o'clock. Uh, always a big, big race. Always the probably the most 
fascinating betting race of the season, obviously the, the most famous race of the season. Callum, we've got the defending champion, Corrick Rambler, at 92, obviously one big for you last year. Get your thoughts on him in a minute. There's, we'll just run through some of the big kind of runners and riders. Corrick Rambler is obviously favourite 92. You've got Ian Maximus last year's uh, Irish national winner. With an LA second last year at 7 to 1, 9 to 1. Meeting of the Waters, big appeal from the, the Irish for Mullins at 10 to 1. You've got Mr. Incredible, Panda Boy, Kitty's Light, Muller Mission, Noble Yates, former winner, and then 20 to 1 bar. Callum, fascinating contest as always. How are you looking at it this year? Less runners as well. Yeah, down to 34 from 40. Um... In the market, you know, seems to be pretty, pretty accurate, doesn't it? Uh, it's it's yeah. a changing race, the nature of it. They obviously make it safer and things, so it's a bit more kind of restricted. It's a bit more kind of for classier types now. Um, it's pretty hard to see outsiders really properly hit the frame, um, given the way it's shaped up now. So, the, the one, the one I've been warm to all season is Mister Incredible. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, I've lagged them up thirty threes and. In a column in February, um, and subsequently he's run really well in the middle of his national. It was a clear prep run of top weight, and he was second. Yeah. And seeing on, he's only five pound higher last year, where he was going well around the canal turn uh, until his saddle slipped. And that's the kind of only blow his copy, but he's always been in the top four in his career. I think Brian Hayes will keep the partnership because he has a quirky sort, but quirky sorts are got good records in the Grand National. I mean, Noble Yates is one. Um, you know, Corrick Rambler has his quirks, so you know he's just one of these that seems to be suited to to the test. And you know, he's run four weeks ago, and we talked to should team up quite nicely for this. You know, an off 10 10 of 150, five pound higher than last year. I think you think he's got a reasonable chance. So, I mean, he's he's the main one that I've that I've supported at the moment. What do you think of the favourite Corrick Rambler? I know when. Very, very good at Cheltenham to finish third, but I remember te texting you after it, and you said, "I'm not sure that's what I, I'm not sure he's what I want for a national this year." No, I mean, it's, this the thing is, it's a four week turnaround from a Gold Cup, you know, it's and, and a grueling Gold Cup of that, and he was absolutely legless at the line, you know. It, yeah. It's a completely different prep to the Ultima, where you know he, he was he was completely well, and last year it was obvious he was completely well in, you know, in the West Handicap horse, you know, won the race. You know, he's now off 159, and he comes alive at this time, and he's, he's run well, so he can call his mark to the Gold Cup. But, you know, you know on, on that ground, it was desperate ground, you know, that surely left the mark in, in top-graded company. That has to left the mark. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as if he was being third and just like quietly staying on and grabbing third. You know, he was in the thick of it, yeah. coming with maybe it was potentially a winning run at the last, and, and, and did get tired. Um yeah, I, I, he's ten year old, and you know, kind like of eleven five. He's, he's a stone higher than last year, and he's also half the price. You know, he's. I mean, I would love him to win. You know, I think he'd be one of the. It's a Scottish sporting, you know, modern day fairy tale, really. Uh, if 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 he wins, um, I I I just can't see. I I think he's more likely to. I think he might blow out here. Um, I'm 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 kind of worried for him a bit. I I see it. I see. I, I think though the way that I don't think was a strong. I, I think he's probably the strongest stay on the race. Like if he's, I mean, not, I, I, how many of these horses well, would, not, would finish? I'm, I'm not so how sure. many horses? How I, many I, horses I, in the year would finish third in the Gold Cup? I, I am Maximus Wood. Think so. I am Maximus Wood. He's rated exactly the same. When I was national, I mean, he won. He won a drill more. <laughs> you know, he yeah. won a ball with Joe quite easily of fourteen lengths. Yeah, he's. He's, he's a very good fit as a title operator. I mean, he's off the same mark, and I, he would have been third in that Gold Cup easily, I, I think, as well. You know, he would have been in the mix. It's, it's kind of his thing. And, and he's a stayer. He's won the Irish National. And, and you know, he's more effective than Court Randall in bad ground. And he's younger and he's trained by Willie Mullins. He's, he's, he's got a lot more upside, I think, than, than Court Randall. I mean, Vanilli as well is surely going to go close. Um, I think meeting of the waters looked like an absolute grand national horse of the day. That's in, in the one team. I. But he's the one I fancied. He's the one of the kind of improvers he's, I looked he's at. Gonna be, he's going to be absolutely bang there, you know, and Panda Boys yeah. in there for, off a of featherweight is who, who who also will have will have strong claims. And you know, you're looking outside that. Uh, Noble Yates could maybe hit the frame again. I don't like the stairs hurdle as a prep for this though. But I mean, no. It's Emmett Mullins, so that, that, that could that could be overcome. <laughs> Nassam's going to get his ground, but 
you know, he, he bombed out in the Gold Cup and, you know, off 1-6-1, one, one, you know, it's just a ludicrous mark in comparison to the top two, isn't it, you know, in, in the market. So, I mean, Alindo could run well, but, I mean, the ground's going against him, so he's probably going to have stayed. A bit least, bit interesting. You know, Capadano, I don't think, will get home. I think he should be running the bowl in this. You know, Liberate Lace maybe he's got more potential than, than you think, but you know, a mark of mark of one four seven is, is no gimme from a male's chase. You know. And then you're at the old boys are dealt to what Gallagher won't run in this ground. I mean, no. late night passes, late night passes, you know, probably not good enough for this. You know, Gallagher Lato could run well uh, in this. Um, probably one of the more interesting outsiders. Coco Beach is carrying enough weight for my liking. Um, yeah, so seen probably start in terms of the ground, chemical energy as well, won't want the ground. Um, and the rest are either you know really old or, or won't go in. Farrick Delane could run well at a big price. If, if you're looking for a big springer from nowhere, he's a, he's a type of he's a kind of type of like fall, fall, pull up, fall, but then from nowhere in one of the big races, you know, can actually run into a place. And he did it at Leopardstown, but that was over hurdles. But I mean, he, but he popped up from absolutely nowhere off one off one four five. And one five four is big, but he was. You know, Cheltenham, Cheltenham, obviously the pair top was a bit was a bit too tough, but you know, he, he's just been ticking away over hurdles to avoid, you know, just going chasing, really. I, I think, mm-hmm. you know, he, he fell at fell a big race at Navin, but it was in behind Coco Beach and then he did didn't do much at Thurls, but he can he can pop up in the spring at big days at heavy ground. He was in the process of running a massive race behind Long Press uh in the in the old Broadway. Um the, the, the three miler there, you know, he, he was two lengths down going absolutely easily when he fell in the second last. Um, he does have he does have class in these kind of top class races on his day, and you know, they're few and far between, but he, he could be one that just pops up somewhere. He's, he's pretty unexposed, you know, for a nine year old, he's pretty lightly raced. Um, Pierre Tom didn't go to plan, but he was off a massive weight there, uh, so I think that was pretty. Pretty forgivable, you know. Sixty-six to one. He's probably probably the outsider that that maybe a few might 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 chuck in, but but yeah, it's, it's missing Carlo for me. And I think meeting of the waters, Vanilli, and I am Maximus are going to are going to fill out the rest of the top four. I like meeting of the waters here. I think, as you say, the Ultima. I really thought it was taken, thinking he's he's this year's caught it Rambler. I thought he shaped up really well in that, and I think he's the one that has. Always looked like a out and out classy steer, and I think the vibes coming out of the Mullen Jar and him are very, very strong over the past week. Interesting to see who rides again. I think that'll all depend on whether you're gonna go on or not. With you must have been credible, I thought it shaped up well in the Midlands National, and you can tell it was just a total prep. Another, I don't want to just go with the Mullins team, but I think Adam would be chosen at a big price at 50s. Trip. I think he's been trapped tri- tri- possibly, but look at what he, I mean, I thought he was quite impressive in the, the race at Dow Royal a few weeks ago. He, he beats classic get, beat classic getaway. I mean, he won that by 14 lengths. Jockey lost the iron. I imagine Sean O'Keefe will ride again. I think he's got quite a good relationship with the horse. Just think with the just think of the prices, just to play him each way. I'm not sure. I think a lot of these are, I'm not gonna like the ground. Nassau will like the ground. Delta work you can't rule out, but I think meeting of the waters to me just looks to be the the standout here at the prices. I think wouldn't surprise me if Corey Rambler won, but meeting of the waters at ten to one I think could be the the one here. I think there's a lot here that like the ground, but I think meeting of the waters might just be the most because you need to, you need to you need to have class now to win a Grand National. It's not just all in the stay. To, uh, you have to say you have to have a bit of a class edge to win a Grand National now, and I think you could have it. Yeah, I mean, there's a safety reason. I mean, it's it's like that. I mean, you need to be you need to be mid one forties now to get a run. So I mean, that that, yeah. that automatically makes it you know a test of a test of class. Um, and you know because of the jumping field, I mean, you can't really get these kind of like low low weighted, low rated kind of horses anymore that are just simply not allowed to not allowed to run. So you do need to reach a certain very high level to to guarantee a run now, which makes it a bit more more of a kind of graded race rather than a handicap at times um how compressed the handicap system is um panda boy will now get a run you know he's he's mm-hmm. he's, he's of obvious interest um whether he'll quite last the distance 
I'm not entirely sure, and he, he does tend to find ways to beat. But yeah, um, Mr. Kerr, meeting the waters is very high in the shortlist as well. Vanilla, and I think I am Maximus is fourth. I mean, meeting the waters reminds me of I am Maximus last year. Yeah. yeah, it seems to be the exact same kind of kind of profile, and, and yeah, there's, there's certainly mileage in the mark there. But yeah, they, they, they're they're definitely top four. Look at it, it's pretty hard to make a case for for others. I would think. Right, Callum, let's wrap up with our best bet, our lay and our each way of the meeting in the whole. We'll start with our best bet. What is your nap for the entry Grand National Festival? Um, being the best incredible in the big one, I think. Oh, he's playing the big race. Wow, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that confident on Mr. Incredible. I think we know where I'm going. I think I know the way you're thinking. And uh, uh, Mild May, I think, is going to be extremely hard to beat if he's anywhere near what he was in the Kim Muir. I think he's going to be very, very strong in that race. Callum, we'll go with your lay. Lay? Uh, not really a big a big layer these days. Um, maybe mystical power. No. Okay. I'm going to go for Bob Bollinger in the entry huddle. And I don't like doing it, but I just think he's I'm not saying I'm not sure he's even money material in that race, and I just don't know. I, I just don't know. I just don't you think know, Bob Bollinger even money. You, you take him on if Irish Point turned up. You know that's that's the kind yeah. of thing. We don't really know the kind of final final makeups of these things, so you'd like to kind of see the whole picture before trying to trying to lay a horse at the prices because you're not quite sure what it's going to run against, and you know what what other rivals are, are kind of viable and and running for you. Um, yeah, you can see why, you know, he does have that kind of head carriage that can, can be off a little bit. And our each way of the meeting, Callum, who you got in your, is your kind of long, long shot in the, the meeting? Oh, Meyertown in the Grand Central. I thought you would, I thought you'd go there. I'm going to go for making headway. I think he could run a big race. I very much like him again. You were very high on him in that mm-hmm. race. He finished fourth and he stayed on. Done very well to finish fourth that day, actually, if you remember. Are you... <laughs> You, yes. you said uh, you were very taken. Guaranteed that he'd been the top four, mate, and you know, yeah, he, he was he a bit. Did you work for that? He did meet a lot. I was, I was at here at the time, you know, watching it on the screen, going, "This isn't going well." But he's, he's, he's <laughs> it definitely shows that he's, you know, he's, he's on a really kind of workable mark and a going day. And your have up on trip should, should suit him nicely, I think. So yeah, he's, he's definitely got a big race on him. But again, I know Sandown's kind of a big kind of target at the end of the season. It's just whether he can take this on route to. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to wrap up the show there, Callum. Thank you very much for joining me in this episode. We'll be back. We're going to do a Punches Town episode towards the end of the jump season, but always a pleasure, mate. Best of luck for your, your selections this week and enjoy entry. Yeah, best of luck to everyone having a go at entry. It's, it's you know, a brilliant three days. Uh, it's going to be quite hard work in the ground for, for some of them, but um, yeah, the race is still shaping up quite well. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed, folks, and always please gamble responsibly, and we'll see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you.